Hello everyone, my name is Vilas Viraragavan and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the tightrope we have to walk when asking for DevX investment against business value that it creates. A little bit about myself, um, I have been working in the software industry for a while and most of my work has been focused on improving engineering effectiveness across organizations. A lot of that has to do with investments in developer experience, as well as continuous delivery. I was uh, working at Walmart for about four years, building up their developer productivity area. Uh, and I continue to focus on engineering innovation uh, and acceleration of innovation now at Truckstop. But enough about me, let's talk a little bit about DevX. What is it? DevX is short for developer experience. It is a combination of all the tools, the processes, the people, the culture that goes into making it easier for us to create software and to deploy software so that our customers can get really good quality solutions for them to use. Uh, DevX is not about extracting productivity. It is about providing enablement for developers to do more. Why do we do this? Because we know development is hard. It is not something that someone says and it happens the next day. It is a process. It's a creative process. It's a scientific process, both of them together. Uh, and in order to develop and create something and to create a really elegant solution, it is important that a whole bunch of functions exist and work in parallel and in tune with each other. Like I mentioned, enablement. Enablement is essentially the enablement around infrastructure, the enablement around platform, and even to an extent, providing utilities and tools above platform for developers to really create solutions that are new and innovative to improve the top line revenue growth for any company. We know development is hard. So if we think about developers' experience, what does really good DevX mean? So good DevX is all about enhancing the developer's joy to create something. They're looking forward to working in this environment and reducing the cognitive load. So for those who have only heard about this recently, cognitive load is a measure of how many work items in parallel does an engineer focus on. This reduces the uh, amount of time that they're able to spend with each individual item and increases their uh, context switch penalty as they move from one item to another. We want to reduce that. Uh, Good DevX is also about enabling teams to deliver value, not just individuals, uh, because that's how we work in any company. We do not have individual individuals completing goals. It's about a team achieving an outcome. Good DevX also boosts talent retention, as I have myself seen over multiple uh, different sets of companies. Um, more folks want to work for companies where there is great tools that enable them to do their job better. It reduces churn and toil. Uh, you do not want developers reinventing the wheel every single time they need something. They want to be using known good processes and good tools. DevX allows focus to remain on business goals and business logic rather than tools and other techniques and processes. The long and short term ROI of a good DevX program should be measurable. If you are a leader in and your organization does not have the ability to measure DevX, that is a bug uh, that can be fixed. It is important to find out exactly what were the wins for a team. What are you looking for in terms of goals and actually create a methodology to find quantitative discussions around that. So. Since I'm talking so much about wins, let me talk to you about a few wins from my past. Uh, the companies shall remain unnamed, but I do want to share that these are real wins that I've experienced in my own experience in the past. So we have had teams that have made the CI CD pipelines 50% faster, resulting in faster turnaround times for tests, for uh, getting faster um, deploys to lower environments. Uh, we have also had teams that have done a 95% reduction or more in new hire onboarding. We have had teams, uh, really good teams that are focused on quality initiatives uh, who have caught 
automation uh, have had written automation tests that catch bugs in fact we have had a escape rate of as low as four or five percent uh, and most of the bugs that are caught early means that it reduces the amount of churn it causes when issues go to production and it also means that these fixes require lesser expense to actually fix we have had teams that have doubled the number of deploys per week both from CI/CD improvements as well as from other improvements in the process to deploy, right? In terms of maybe non-manual maturity reviews, uh, removing um, sort of dead zones or windows where you cannot deploy. Um, there's also been efforts uh, which have succeeded at lowering PR wait times. Uh, and for those using M uh, Git, it's like uh, MRs, right? How quickly can someone review and submit an MR? So. These are all wins, and we'll continue to talk more about the uh, more about how we quantify some of these uh, later. Right? Why is that important? Uh, it's very important to understand that DevEx investment discussions have to be quantitative, and that's exactly how we can tie some of these investments back to business goals and business outcomes. So, in the rest of the discussion, we're going to have an exercise where we'll talk about these DevEx wins that I just explained. But we're going to use a um, hypothetical scenario of an organization that has about 100 engineers. We are paying them at about $80 per hour on an average. Each feature release that we can do as a net new is 100 k in addition to the annual revenue, the top line revenue. We have about uh, 10 engineers that are hired yearly, and about 10% of the organization is developer experience. So let's assume, let's go back now to the wins. And let's first note down some of the numbers from it. So 50% faster CICD pipelines. This was in reality, a 30 minute savings across our uh, across the all of the uh, CICD uh, pipelines that work for those products, about 30 minutes of saving daily for every single engineer. So every single engineer is now saving half an hour uh, and becoming more productive in that time. 95% um, reduction of new hire. What does this mean? So we actually had an effort where about two weeks of onboarding time was reduced to two hours. That means you're saving all that time that is wasted on just looking for the, the correct package to be deployed. Uh, and the way that we did achieve this with a lot of automation, with a lot of smart processes, and with a lot of inbuilt utilities and tools as well as onboarding and uh, like discussions and peer uh, uh, sort of group uh, discussions and things like that, peer programming, all that. Um, bugs caught via automation tests. So the end-to-end -end tests, which are typically the most expensive tests to run, uh, were running for about three hours. Uh, by bringing it down to about 20 minutes, uh, this meant that we could catch a lot more bugs much faster, as well as not pay a huge context change penalty for the developers. For, let's imagine a developer writes a piece of code, submits it, and the pipeline runs, and they come back in three hours. Sometimes they have missed the context or moved on to something else. Uh, and that means there is a context penalty, a context switch penalty that they have to pay when they come back. With 20 minutes end-to-end -end testing, it's mostly within the window of the same context. By doubling the number of deploys per week, this means double the number of slots for new revenue launches. And by lowering PR wait times, I mean, there's a lot of uh, development uh, that we have seen in the past. This means quicker responses, means quicker uh, solutions, quicker fixes, and quicker deploys, right? So what we saw was a, a reduction from 16 to 12 hours on an average for PRs. That about four hour savings for any developer. So if I now convert some of these into ROI numbers, let's let's do a quantitative discussion, right? So 30 minutes per engineer, it's about 4K daily. Um, two hours instead of two weeks for every new hire. So there was about 10 per year. Paying them at about 80K, uh, sorry, $80 an hour would mean about 32K yearly as a saving, right? From 180 to 20 minute test cycle, uh, this is a daily uh, saving. That means 21K daily that is saved across the engineering organization. If you're doubling your number of deploys per week, that's an upside potential of having another new net net new revenue uh, upside potential of 100K per week. A four hours time savings for a PR is about 32K 
daily. Now, remember that these numbers uh, are specifically about the things that we can quantify. Now, if I go back to the wins from my past, the other thing you'll notice is that in the automation testing, the bugs caught by automation testing, there's also an item about higher trust. And to be very clear, trust is a significant part of how the business runs. Any loss or lack of trust immediately means a loss of business, a potential loss of not just the business from that customer, but also the customer's immediate circle, the family, uh, maybe friends, uh, maybe co-workers, and sometimes it's possible for their entire lifetime. So this is significant and it's hard to monetize this number. However, this tells us that by working and investing in DevEx, we are actually protecting the erosion of trust from the customer. So all of the information that I provided, which was about 4K daily plus 32K yearly plus all of these numbers, if we do put in all of these together and we calculate, we see that we have a savings, a significant amount of savings. So if you look at the ROI on a business investment of about, and I think that number is mistaken. It's, it should be uh, about one to 2 million. But let's go with that. About one to two million of investment in DevEx results in a 11.5 million top line revenue growth plus cost savings in a single year. Now, these numbers are not exaggerated. Um, even though all of these wins did not happen at the same place, many of these wins came together to find uh, huge successes. However, by, uh, by providing this number, what I want to show you is the investment in DevX sometimes returns more than a 10x return uh, in terms of the money saved for the environment, uh, for the uh, company, as well as the top line revenue. So what are, what are going to be our big takeaways from this? By the way, this exercise can be done by yourself uh, as long as you can provide quantitative numbers for each of the wins that are happening from the DevX area you can do the same exact exercise and come to some meaningful conclusion. Uh, this will vary across different companies, different teams. Uh, that's a disclaimer. Uh, also, it all varies based on the amount of efficiency that exists within the system today and how you go from there. You're, if you're an already efficient system, it is fully possible that the incremental uh, success that you find with improvements in DevX might be smaller, but they capitalize over time uh, as a significant growth. So what are our takeaways? Like one, enabling devs is a huge win for the business. As we just saw, uh, it is providing us with a 10x um, return. That's not uh, small. Um, as leaders, what are, what is our job? Our job is to translate these wins into numbers that are meaningful, that actually find place somewhere in a PNL statement eventually, right? We have to find, and that means we have to find quantitative descriptions for every single saving that the company, uh, that the team is doing, right? Uh, DevX investment is a business accelerator. No two ways about it. If we are focusing on providing our developers with an environment and a set of tools and a culture that allows them to be their best, it requires significant investment. And that investment is DevX. Um, however, this work is not simple. It means that for us as leaders, we have to build a framework similar to what we have, or maybe something different. We have to align with the business leaders. We have to align with product. And we have to encourage ROI discussions. Not all ROI discussions might be positive, and that's great. We need to learn, we need to adapt, and we need to adjust so that we can actually have DevEx be meaningful for all of the company. So this is my way of thinking about it. I mean, if you have something that you think would be the right or the better way to do it. I am all ears. This is a call for debate. Um, so I thank you for your time. And if you have any questions that I can answer, please reach out to me uh, via Slack for Platform Engineering Slack, or uh, just that's my LinkedIn. Uh, you can always reach out to me. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for your time. Take care.